high-performance computing is the advent of the GPU as a computational engine. And obviously, this has been going on for several years. Um, at the AMD uh, Fusion Software Developer Summit, we're featuring a range of high-performance computing uh, sessions that are really starting to show how the GPU can play as a computational engine. And one of the things we're also doing here is showing the maturation of OpenCL as a programming model for heterogeneous computing. Now, I, we get asked a lot about where is OpenCL, is it laid, is it behind CUDA, what's happening? And there's obviously a perception that CUDA has made great strides in the high-performance computing community because it's been there for a while and it's offered a familiar programming interface. Well, what we see now is the maturation of OpenCL really helping people to see this as a viable programming model. And what it offers is the capability for you not only to download compute to the GPU as you might do it with CUDA, but for you to start utilizing the CPU and the GPU as um, complementary computing engines. Um, and really, that's what heterogeneous computing is about. Um, we're seeing the types of tools happen here that's bringing the programming of the GPU up a level. So there's a session where we're showing um, Java APIs that actually a Java programmer could call that have OpenCL underneath them. And so as we see the maturation of those types of tools, we're going to be putting that type of OpenCL programming in the hands of a larger uh, audience of people. And why would that be important to the high performance computing community? And that's because they are not necessarily buying clusters that are all the same. We have shops that have um, x86 and RISC processors. We have shops that have NVIDIA and AMD ATI graphics technology. And you even have people that might be starting to look at ARM technology. So what happens is OpenCL provides you a framework where you can use a variety of types of processors and you can use this heterogeneous computing across that range of processors. And I think in the end, that's the kind of thing that is going to make OpenCL really an important tool for the high performance computing community moving forward. What OpenCL has today is a programming model that lets you download compute to CPU or GPU. So in a sense, you have one programming model that allows you to program both of the computational engines in your system. And that allows you the flexibility to decide where code is best run and how to balance the code so you can get the best possible performance. So it's not just a methodology that lets you download compute to a GPU. It allows you to be able to use all the computational capability of a system, CPU and GPU, to the benefit of your program. One of the other um, trends we see is in HPC is the continuation of the scale-out cluster. Um, and it's taking on a bit different form now because what we find is people are looking to see if they can make the nodes of their cluster very computationally dense. Um, this actually helps them to maybe reduce the size of the, the cluster, maybe the footprint of the cluster in the data center, and can also help you maybe control some of the power and cooling cost around the cluster. So for you to get to a more dense cluster, one of the things we've been doing is creating uh, processors that have more cores per processor. And so obviously more cores per processor allows you to increase that core density and that allows you to have these very dense compute nodes and still maintain the scale out environment. And so in a sense it's a little bit of the best of both worlds where you can have computationally dense co uh, core nodes uh, with lots of cores 
and you can also scale out so that you can scale with the demands of your uh, computational pro problem. We've been uh, talking a lot about our bulldozer core and very openly because it's a core that is our next core architecture, um, our complete redesign of the core since 2003, and a core that we're very, very proud of. And as we move forward with bulldozer, we've looked at how to put this these cores together so that they are a modular in fashion so that they can share the things that make sense to share like cash but they're completely independent so that you can have the best and most efficient processing such as execution engines. Um, we've redesigned our floating point units so that it can be more efficient. You could run two 128-bit SSE or AVX uh, uh, code uh, pieces Side by side, you can run uh, 256 AVX, and we've um, extended the instruction set with an FMA4, which is Fuse Multiply Add, which really can help increase the performance of your code if you've got a lot of these fused uh, operants.